Films uh, organized is organized by me since year 2008 until recently. So basically, my main business is event management, and I I'm I'm 38 years old this year. I studied in uh, Sultan Ismail College, and I married to my wife, who is a Thai citizen here in Yala, with two kids. Uh, my 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 elder my elder son is uh, called Prosper and Prosper Tongs and uh, my daughter is Jasmine. So basically, what happened is I my wife is a housewife, so I plan to do something for her. And COVID news came around November last year, and when that time I had a thought that if let's say a communist countries like China say they are screw up, then something big is going to happen. So I kind of make my way that, you know, I have to do my events and uh, expand event to Thailand uh, as fast as possible. So I ran this place in Yala. Okay, I ran this place at Yala and um, plan to expand my business in event management and also having a mini marts here. My wife will be, but ideally my wife will be handling the mini marts by me setting up the system for her and me doing event management. Our last event was in Patani, ASEAN Mall. We are the event supplies and coordinate for, for ASEAN Mall on February and Sungai Golok on January. And also one event, state government event, corporate with state government events in Kelantan on January. So our opening ceremony for one month is actually expected to be on. This is some of our event picture. This is some of our event picture. Um, our Wang Mat is supposed to open on 24th of March and Malaysia announced a lockdown on 16th of March in the evening and on the 17th, I only have one day to decide if I want to stay in Malaysia or in Thailand and that time was school holiday so my kids, is, my kids and my family is here because during the initial times, um, what I agreed with my wife is my wife will be taking care of our kids in, in Malaysia and send them to school while I, I manage the shops here in Jala. So when the announcement came, my wife is here, my kids is here to prepare for our, our tentative opening ceremony on 34th of March. So with the announcement, I told my wife, okay, um, we are not going back because it's that, that during that time, uh, COVID cases in, um, in Malaysia is quite high compared to Thailand. And I make up my mind that since my wife um, is not really socialized persons and can't really speak other language other than the mother tongue, um, I will reside here in Thailand. So um, I got locked up here in Thailand uh, with uh, limited budgets and uh, things to plan. So during the first announcement from Malaysia PM, it's only two weeks, but I said, bullshit, it's not going to be two weeks. It's going to be two months or more for me to be able to go back. So I, I, I tried to relax and think what can I do. I took the first two weeks, three weeks to actually monitor and see what I can do. I clear up my whiteboards uh, and start drafting uh, by end of the month. So I opened some YouTube, see, see, see how is it case studies from uh, consulting companies about COVID and all that. And uh, from the industry of professionals, professionalism during uh, the study, tourism, oil and gas, uh, flights and events are mostly affected by COVID. But consumer goods is not. So with that, I make the decision. I told my wife, okay, let's forget about event and start doing something new, which is consumer and retail products because it was the tops in, in COVID studies that is not affected by COVID. And if you remember in Malaysia, those times, even Gardenia is sold out. So from there, I start working on and 
start planning what I can do. So from the journey started actually around end of April because I start writing my my uh, how's it my map end of April, and the first phase of my my map is April until August. Yeah, and things has been falling accordingly because I've been following uh, COVID statistics and see what I can do. People start selling online, so we do online as well. And um, Thailand's unleash their how's it lockdown or their curfews around end of June. And during that time, they are selling online with the sales of maybe uh, 50K per month already by doing online, 50K ringgits. And, but it's not going well because um, March, April, May, and June, we have got no income. So we, we, are, we are running on our own saving for four months. So we need to hit right back based on plan as good as possible. So by doing online, um, I start getting my staff to pack things in Malaysia, my furniture, this and all that, put it up in our lorry to bring it in together with our goods during that time. So we've been moving our goods, my furniture, uh, my clothing and all that during that period. And I have access to um, online transfer. So what I did was uh, purchasing my goods using online transfer since I can't get cash on hands. So from there, I'm converting my cash to goods, bringing my furniture in on all that within the four months period. And once they unleash the lockdown, Thailand's have a budget to do events. And I, I joined my first event on July 1st because from the study of COVID, when people uh, get out from the lockdown periods, they want to buy. They are content. They are, they are they are staying at home way too long, and they want to spend. So by by July, I joined an event uh, in Hat Nai, Prince Songkhla University, and opened the shop at the same time. So Wang Mat officially operate on July, right? And when I start, when I joined the events, uh, the crowd is as good as I expected, and we actually managed to pay off the rental, uh, make some profits about maybe six, seven thousand ringgit from ten days event, with a lot of order. So our sales doubled every month until October. So with the double sales, we start putting in small goods, uh, doing our on-ground research of what uh, we can bring into our mini markets, how we want to strategy our, our sales and all that. So now, this month, one month op officially operates for six months. And uh, we've been growing a lot by... Uh, now we have an office, showrooms in Hat Nyai as well. And we are official distributor for some brands of Malaysia products we get from uh, factories which but we do imports Malaysia products but only consumer and groceries retails and consumers goods so anything not related to that right fashions uh, hardware uh, automobiles seafood frozen we don't do because like seafood frozen is in other category and it's much more difficult and also the way to manage we need a coal container yeah so cool storage container. So what happened is um, now we have two outlets and we have agents throughout the whole Thailand because on October, we actually managed to send up goods to almost whole Thailand. And now our, we are already starting to send to Laos. Yeah, to Laos and we got contacts to Myanmar. So, so from that, we've been expanding quite fast and a lot. Uh, when and, and all the network that I get from Thailand now is mostly new networks. And I think COVID has, is like the last straw or uh, the last push for, for, for me to actually uh, go out of what I do normally, which is events to consumer markets. And from the experience of event, it, it actually taught me on how to plan well. And now with the two outlet, why two outlet? Um, one month is a month, 
it's a showroom and our target market is uh, people locally in Yala to come and buy. People that come to Yala as a tourist and they want to buy souvenir bags. Also government servants or students that stay in the area. But with that said, we can only sell retails and retails can't earn us enough. That's why we are moving to wholesales and online. So basically, Wang Mart will be handling this. They'll be handling the segment of retails, wholesales, and online. The reason why I'm setting up an office showroom in Hat Nyai this month, I already have, uh, it's, it's done, and it should be operating this month, is because I'm targeting uh, modern trades. I personally expect Thailand should have second lockdown because even in Korea, they have their third lockdown now. So for me to uh, get things uh, stable fast, if you follow the stories, we actually cover our loss for the past four months that we have not been operating and we've been losing money using our savings. And if my calculation is not missed, if not wrong, we actually uh, our, had our ROI return of investment for our Yala outlet. That's why we dare to open an office in Hat Nyai. So for now, if let's say there's a second lockdown, I assume the economy will be worse. But um, surprisingly, thanks to Thai government now, even with their political issues, they seem to be having some good policies, like I said, the half, half and half payments, whereby each citizens and users that register with uh, these policies, this budget, is um is how say is deemed to claim 300 bucks payment per per day which is a uh, government will pay 150 bucks you pay 150 bucks so per person is about 3000 over but means 300 over you get so to apply is actually quite easy it takes few hours to apply and they're being, they are giving out a second batch of budget up to i think january or february so with that, it kind of boosts the economy because uh, the, the money you have to top up in the apps and use and, and get the government funds in the app. If you don't use it, then you might not have the second batch. So it kind of push people to spend using the app. Even the uh, older generation have to learn how to use the apps. So now why people ask me that why another outlet in Hat Nyai? Because Yala outlet seems to be doing quite well, but we can only cover Yala markets, which to me, I think is quite small. So I need bigger market. That's why I go to Hat Nyai. But for me to open another outlet in Hat Nyai, it would be too much for me to handle in terms of cost, in terms of uh, uh, working resources, uh, and etc. Stock inventory. So I changed to office and I put myself as a, a division to actually supply goods to modern trades or to chain retail store. So my targets for 2021 and my jobs in one month for 2021 21 is to supply Malaysian products that we import in to local modern trades. Currently, we have contacts for few locals, modern trades, uh, retail store in, in Hat Nyai, which is Livivat, Wok, and k, &K that uh, when you combine, they have about 50 outlets. My target for next year is I need to have 200 to 300 outlets that I can supply to in Thailand. So with that said, uh, I have to chase my target before there is a second lockdown or any recession coming. So that would be my thought for how I work on Wang Mart and the journey basically. Yeah, so that's about it. Any question? Wow, what a journey. Thank you, Joey, uh, for your interesting journey to opening at one month by having that uh, vision how one month would be uh, that is 
also very interesting. We hope that you will uh, succeed in that. Um, just wondering, as of now, you are saying more for bringing Malaysian product to uh, Thailand, right? Yeah. Do you have any, um, is there any possibility, uh, any other country product, example, probably uh, maybe from Singapore or maybe from Indonesia to be part in Wang Wang Mat? Um, I, first and foremost, I have to be clear that I'm doing uh, food and beverages, yes. snacks category. Yeah. So this is some of the picture in our shop that we bring in. Lah. So Wang Mat, why I put Wang Mat? Because it needs to be a word that Malaysian can pronounce and Thailand can pronounce. Wang in Malaysia, as many people know, means money, cash. Yeah. So that is Wang Mat. In Thailand, Wang stand for castle. And in Chinese, Wang stand for king. So when you put it into a story, it's a king in the castle of cash. And about product from other country, yes, we did have in mind, but we have to go products by products. And when you talk about consumers and uh, food and snacks, our policy, we want to do it legally in the long run. So mm. all the import parts have to be done uh, properly. And with that being said, we have to do product by products, SKU by SKU, and minimum requirement for us to do it the right way, the document required is DMP or HACCP. Without that, we can't do it legally. And when we can't do it legally, we can't supply it to modern trades. So when you say about Singapore, Indonesia, we are interested, but first, the documentation parts, HACCP or DMP uh, is required. That's the first one. Second part, uh, we'll need samples, send it to us, and we discuss about profit margin and the possibility of market. Because when you send me the sample, I'll have to do a basic market study survey with my friends here in Thailand first by bringing the sample, let them try, see what they comment, this and all that. So if that is okay, means we have documentation done, we have food testing done, um, we have our market uh, positioning done. If we agree to do, uh, we might need track record of how well your product is doing in your countries and mm. how you put up your strategies. Means in Singapore and Indonesia, how well is this product doing? Because these are the track record. If you are not doing well in your own country, it's so much more difficult for us to convince people here and going extra miles to say that, hey, this is good. And then they say, okay, so how much has you been selling in your own country? I, I, I can't convince them that way. So with proper track records, marketing strategy in your countries, uh, maybe you have award certificates like halals or whatever that can convince. Then we can profit further. By meaning, meaning by profits for, uh, proceeds further is maybe we can rent an event in any of the place, like the one I did in Prince Songkla University, to actually go directly to the market, open a booth, sell your product, get reality checks on if the product can sell. Because during events, the crowd is there, people is there to buy. But if your products can't catch their attention or uh, can't even convince them during event, it'll be a tough job for us to do proceed further, if you get what I mean. Yes, yes. So it means that uh, you are more focused uh, in expanding products that you are familiar with, uh, which is more to Malaysian product, to expand in the local market in, in, in Thailand? No, no. Um, what I would say is it is so much easier Mm -hmm. for me to bring a product that the Thais don't know uh, but is doing well in their home country and convince them saying that, hey, this product is selling well in home country and now I'm bringing it, in, it into Thailand mm, so that you it. guys have a chance to actually try what is good in our home country. Instead of a product that is not known in our home countries, 
but trying to push the mindsets, push the identity in that, hey, let's try. COVID is not a period that we can make a lot of try and error and make mistakes because one small mistakes could, could be an end to our business. So when you ask me that questions, I would need the so said things, the track records. If, if the product is doing well in your home countries, we discuss about the strategy, do proper market studies and food testing because if I join an event, the most I'll spend is maybe 5,000 ringgit. Okay. For, for staff, for transportation, for logistics, for booth rental. But I get, um, how is it, uh, the right feedbacks from the end user, from the consumer. And I only spend 5,000 ringgit. Instead of me buying a container of goods, maybe I have to spend 100, 100 to 200,000 ringgit, but don't know where is the market. Yes, correct. Yeah. Great, great, great. Thank you, thank you for the answer. One, okay. one question for you, Joey. Yes. So, is, is, what, is, what is your one or two ideal products that you wish to bring into Thailand? Currently, this is the product that I bring in at the moment. If you can see, it's crispy cocoa tarts and it's been viral in Thailand at the moment. Uh, but the, the, the trend slightly dropped because as you know, once um, the pro viral products will drop when the trends die off. And the second product that I'm bringing in is uh, Afi Hanif's. Um, it's a Sarai Wangi sprays that do cleaning. Mm -hmm. uh, um, they, they, their factory is in Malacca and they supply to Tesco since year 2016 as uh, one of the top 20 SME. Since 2016 to currently 2020, and they got four category of products, and two of it really got local KKM, and they have been supplying to 2,000 over outlets in Malaysia at the moment. So with that, it's so much easier for me to convince a modern trade here that hey, we have been selling these products well in in Malaysia. We have been supplying 2,000 over outlets, and we have a factories in Malaysia and. Let's change from using chemical. Um, the, 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 the world is not very friendly now because it's, it's, it's chemical. You, you kill mosquito, you kill insect by using bicon. You can't even sit after you spray bicon for like 30 minutes. So, and they have chemicals that, that stay. So let's change to uh, green products by using natural products, which Afi Hanis is natural products from Sarai Wangi. And is, uh, by having nice smells, it can actually uh, chase away insect as well and be safe because it's natural. So these are the products that I look. At least you have a story. So if let's say the product is from factory, I need to be, I need to have the product from factory because I needed the documents like HACCP, GMP to apply for local KKM here as importer. Without that, I can't proceed further. So these are the example of the product that I've been in. Means snacks, consumers, and groceries. Hopefully, I answer your question, Tan. Um, not really, because not what, really. what I'm asking, yeah, what I'm asking is, uh, what are the ideal products that you wish to bring in to 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 your Wang Mart that currently you don't have yet? What do, do you, you mean by what do you mean by ideal? For, for example, maybe you, you, you look at Malaysian market, there's particularly one product that sells like hot cake over in Malaysia that you wish to bring into Thailand kind of thing. Have you like survey kind of that products? We got lah, but big factory won't actually want to deal with us because um, for us to do a survey is actually quite easy. Since Thailand and Malaysia is border located, um, for you to know what Thai product is selling well in Malaysia, you just go to the border, you can find. It's the same case for Thailand. For me to know uh, what Malaysia product sells well here in Thailand, I just go to the border, see the Kedai Runcit at the border, what they are selling well. So I have the list. Basically, we got more than 20 lists of what is the right product to sell. But when we approach the factory, what they tell us is uh, we don't have a track record yet. And uh, ideal products that you said uh, that I can mention, maybe Ramli Burgers. If you can get a contact for Ramli Burgers from me, I have 
a buyer to buy one container per week. Any Ramli burgers, I mean Ramli burgers, when you said, when I talk about Ramli burgers, is from their patty, their breads, to their ketchups. Ramli burgers. Another one is a gold choice nugget, the one that is heart shaped, made in Malaysia. I think that of their factory is in Johor, if I'm not mistaken. If you can get that and read the right document for me to import um, legally, I can say I can take about two containers in one month. So that are the example other than the snacks. Snacks are like super rings, um, Bika, um, what else, the dolphin bands, and the one that I asked the other day, White Castle. White Castle biscuit is doing well. But White Castle, White Castle Biscuit, the factory is in Penang, which I tried to contact, but they, they doesn't respond to me. If you have White Castles or Apple, Apollo chocolates, the Apollo bar chocolates, um, I can take about one container per month. So I think, I think it's, I've been specific enough to your question though. Hopefully. Yes, so yes, you, yes. So Thank you are you. saying this this particular brand do not want to uh, uh, entertain your order because of documentation or is it because of process? Because I, it I, would be I, the normal uh, problem uh, in a way that they just don't want to disrupt the supply chain. I think the last thing, the last statement of yours is the keyword. They doesn't want to disrupt the current supply chain, that is one of it. Mm. Uh, second reason is like Ramli. Uh, after I've been doing some checking, Ramli burgers uh, productions, um, they can't cope with their demands, even right. domestically. Mm. So they are now expanding to a new factories. And once the new factories has been expanded, um, they will focus more on Malaysia markets mm. uh, in, in Malaysia, then to Sabah, Sarawak and Brunei later only to thailand and because to have meat products export from malaysia that's another difficulties in terms of documentations that yes. is ramli burger's case correct 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 yeah for ramli burger is because they are re literally expanding their factory i think it's i think it's almost done so yeah like what you said is true i'm just i'm just wondering about all these uh snack and other orders that they they just don't want to entertain because they think uh, and the best answer they give you we don't have track record all right okay i mean come on uh that is not a very uh, good way of turning people down but at least they if they really truly don't want you to disrupt the supply chain, at least they can just say, hey, uh, you're from Thailand. Okay, can you go to our distributor in Thailand? You get from them. You know, things like that. They, they, they don't have official distributor in Thailand yet because it's still done illegally. And exactly. No matter what it is, uh, I have to agree with them that I don't have a track record. But thing is gonna change if I could achieve my goals by having 200 outlets that I supply to. Even the context of Big C, um, Thai people or people that came into Thailand, you should know about Big C. Big C is doing this small retain chain store called as Big C Mini. And I actually got a context of that person in charge already for the whole Thailand. So my nearest goals, if, if I could supply and I have 200 outlets in my hand, I can go back to those factory and hey, I have 200 outlets in my hands and I already got track records of uh, how much is per the purchasing per month. So um, are we okay to talk now? So that would be my plan. <laughs> okay. Uh, then again, uh, my, my next question would be, who is your competitor now in Thailand? Frankly speaking, I have, I have no idea who is my competitor now, though. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. I don't know where to look for in terms of who is my competitor. I, I don't know any. Plus, okay. like I said, I, I don't know where I should look for because um, so far I haven't met any. So far I haven't met any. Mostly are doing uh, illegal way. Lah. 
means uh, yeah. they bring it in as a hand carry, not uh, as a proper route. Why I ask is very simple. Uh, in, in Malaysia, you have few muds uh, around, right? Um, and there's a different type of mud. Let's go to the most uh, simple, like convenience store, like 7-Eleven. So 7-Eleven, the competitor will be uh, uh, probably a Circle K in, in, in Malaysia, right? And you can see how big 7-Eleven network there. So Circle K is facing problem trying to beat that network and try to get the supply from the same network and which is they fail and they, uh, they get problem there. Then uh, another example, uh, I just share my own experience. In Indonesia, the biggest mart is Indomaret and then we have Alfamart. They are like the biggest, they have like 15,000 outlet all over Indonesia for each uh. So, but yet this in here, we still have all these small, small mud. We call it warung warung, like the owned by the locals. Um, but it seems that uh, everyone is supplying the same thing. So I'm not sure in Thailand, uh, whether they have that small, small kind of uh, mud actually competing with each other. Because why I ask, because if the small mud can get their supply legally. And I don't think one month will actually would face that problem. I mean, this supply will, will actually come from uh, the local product, right? Like what, from Thailand's product. Okay, from, from my limited knowledge, um, 7E is under CP, Chirung Kukapan of Thailand, and they are doing very well, as many of you know. And they should be the top players now. During COVID, uh, now 7E in Thailand actually have delivery. Means the staff in their 7E do delivery from house to house. So with that, Thailand also have local smart, like you say. Uh, Malaysia, you have Speedy or KNK. Uh, in Thailand, they have in different different state provinces, like in Surat Thani, they have Tern Chai. In, um, in, in Korat, they have another three more brands. So a lot of local supermarkets brand here in Thailand. But they are having difficulty when 7-Eleven have better promotions and products. So now you have to understand that Wang Mart is actually, Wang Mart business module is not actually opening a retail chain store or to become a mini markets or Kedai Runcit. But the concept of Wang Mart is actually to have a base, a showroom for people to know that, hey, if you want to look for Malaysian products or product from ASEAN countries, we have a showcase here for you to buy retails. But our business module is actually to become a, a trader, mm. import and export. So with that, when you talk about competitor, as for now, I can't think of because for local markets, they are our customer because I target to supplies to them. And mm. by supplying to them, they can compete with 7E because whatever that I'm supplying to them legally is what 7E doesn't have. And why Malaysia products? Because I always believe that Malaysian's halal is recognized throughout the whole world. And by having the outlets in Yala, Yala have got 75% of Muslim uh, populations. Patani about, I can't remember, maybe 80 something, 85% something, and uh, including Naratiwat, which is mostly Muslims. So Muslim in Thailand is not less than 5 million. If only I could capture these markets, the non-Muslim markets is my bonus. Yes, definitely. It's good. It's good. Good to know. Good to know. Uh, good to know that you are not competing with the the other mud. You are actually competing with this uh, importer exporter, which is the bonus of yourself that you have a display uh, area, which is your wang mud. That means uh, more business should come to you when you actually open up to uh, more other countries. If halal is uh, 
is your concern. Yes, of course, Malaysia has the best. And I mean, the rest of the world will actually see you as a, a new uh, gateway to Thailand. Do you agree? That, that should be our mission. And um, our strength is, uh, I could speak five languages. Yeah, I speak English, Bahasa, as I'm from Kota Baru, Kelantan. And I speak Thai and Chinese Mandarin and Chinese Hokkien. So with that, um, when you say our competitor is um, traders or importer, are you, why I said I don't know who is my competitor? Because when you said that statement correct, my competitor is another traders that mm. do import export. But you have to niche it down to the same import uh, traders that do the same product as mine. Which I think if there is any, those that is doing legally should be less than five. And more than that are uh, my associate, associate. Why I say associate is because um, they might be importing different items. And uh, they are, might be exporting to other countries. Like now I have affiliate, uh, affiliates in Laos and also Myanmar. So I've been talking to a few, few traders as well, like uh, there's one from Turkey. So, so in long runs, one, I have enough products in, in my belts, in, in, in whatever that we are controlling. Uh, we should be able to ex expand in Southeast Asia. Zaha, you, you didn't open your mic. All right, sorry. <laughs> So anyone else here have a question, please do ask Joey directly because he's waiting for a lot of questions actually. Hi, uh, Joey. Hi, I'm Sarah. Hello, Sarah. I'm Lubis Consulting. Um, I used to do it. I'm still doing events on a part-time base. Uh, I actually do more on esports uh, because of COVID lah, we have to move our structures around and how we do our events. So mostly we're doing online now. I understand that we chose it to use cons to go towards consumerism, retails, because uh, yeah, true, the high demand of supplies for food, especially. Uh, I still remember everyone's been panic buying. So um I just wanna know, like, let's say. Uh, in another one year, by the early of 2022, uh, <clears throat> let's say that COVID has uh, almost eradicated or, you know, God's will, there's no more COVID. Will you actually be going back on track for what you did with the event? Or will you actually still continue to expand your retail business or are you going to do both? I'm definitely not going back to events. Hmm. I've been doing events for more than 10 years. I've been organizing 77 events. I've been doing outdoor, indoor, cultural events for states and privates. My record is having 17 events consecutively in eight months. One event, seven to 10 days. So um, the, the current event haven't finished. The next event really starts setting up. So I'm not going back to event reason because uh, one, I I think I reached the limits of what I do in events. Number two is because event is not something that I could see myself doing for long because you get older, your stamina get lesser, and if you stop doing event, you your income stops. Third reasons, if we have vaccine and the vaccine is working well. In year 2021, everyone got vaccine. 2022, everything goes back to normal. What, what do you mean by normal? By normal, does, there's no such thing as going back to normal. That you have to accept it. You have events, doesn't mean you have buying powers. Recession effect is going to come. For me, event is just like swimming against the stream, except you try converting events from traditional uh, events that you sell environment, you go there, can buy satay, this or that, to a virtual events that you can do import, export. I think that would work. Global virtual events would be the next thing because 
when when COVID happens, a lot of people talk about new normal. Now we are living in new normals, and COVID is actually a push for us to change. And those who doesn't want to accept these realities and doesn't want to change, I don't think there's a space for them to grow. That would be my answer. Hmm. Well, all right. Thank you. Sarah from Rubik's Consulting. From from where? Malaysia. Yes. Malaysia. Which part of Malaysia? Um, KL. You're from KL. Wait, apart I... from that, my event stuff is uh is from my past experience because I do esports, so uh e games and stuff, gaming community. So we enhance uh players in Malaysia and send out them to play internationally or you know uh, making good news for the country and stuff <laughs> even though it's still new uh, but of course with all the whole thing let's get a bit halted and all of our stuff are going online now so for us in our side of entertainment and sports we, uh, we are hoping that by 2022 we can actually continue doing um, gaming events but not in the sense of like uh how do I say exhibition? Yeah, it's more about events where we actually do like uh, tournaments and uh, that we promote uh people to, from outside to come to Malaysia to promote uh esports. Uh, I, I think es esports like is yeah. If I think esports is actually good sector to go in. Just that maybe oh. you could explore, you could explore the new technology that you can actually have global event for esports. Because um, I think for current new generations, uh, e-sport is something that we have to accept that, that is, this is their, their kind of sports. And uh, with COVID and all that, for them to be familiar with online and having uh, online gaming and e-sports things, I think they can do it from home or anywhere. So for e-sport, it's different from the events that I do. The events yeah, that yes. I do... Is so much more different and, and yeah, they're like if, trade and yeah. exhibitions, right? Correct, correct. If let's say you talk about my kind of event, we are definitely going against the streams. But if you talk about esports, esports, I think if you were to explore it correctly, um, there is a potential in it. Okay, okay, thank you. All the maybe, best for maybe your... maybe esport to to virtual reality. Uh, that actually depends on the market because esports are now much more recognized when it comes to like uh, Olympics and stuff. We starting like last time, uh, last year we had Sea Games exactly a year ago. We sent our players to let's see, uh, last year was no Korea. Yeah, so we sent our player to to fight, and then uh, this year was cancelled lah. Of course. Um, <laughs> I would say VR is a bit hard because it depends on why games get published and if they're actually players because there's only one place VR in Malaysia, which is Hado. Uh, that also, they were they were sponsored by Arizona because of they get sweaty a lot because you're running around and stuff. Uh, but somehow VR is still not there yet. For now. We are, we are all for, still waiting for, when for, is VR going to be a big deal. For now, maybe mm. in the next few years from now, uh, the technology for VR could be cheaper, like like solar True. cells. Yeah, so I think I think I think esport is different from my my event case. Mm -mm, yeah, mm -mm, mm -mm. yeah, yeah. It's something that is getting more recognized, and people are trying to to jump into it. But for me, it's because I've been into it for the past few years, so I'm still I still get to do some stuff about it. Yeah, regardless it's COVID. Uh, then because the thing is, I was just wondering because there are times also where I think where I actually want to put esports aside and just continue into doing retails or some other businesses. Not that I'm seeing esports is falling down, it's just that like you said, the tiring part about doing events can be very, very <laughs> mentally tolling also. <laughs> yes, because it's so it's only been five years, but time. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Thank you so much, Jerry. Okay, thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Joey. Anyone else? Maybe Mr. Panumat want to ask something? Uh, 
Good morning, everybody. Uh, morning. Firstly, yeah. Uh, firstly, I would like to congratulate uh, Joey. Uh, he is very, uh, very talented, very uh, expert expertise in 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 the connection. I've been following him on Facebook. Uh, uh, he's doing quite well, so uh, I have to uh, get congratulate to him. Uh, however, uh, for what he's doing right now, it's beyond my 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 imagination uh, that he he's able to connect uh, with not only uh, from southern part of Thailand and he's going uh, through Bangkok and even going to Myanmar and Laos. So, so it, it, it's really, really amazing uh, how you're doing right now. However, I heard you mention about the product that you, if you, you like to sell or do trading, uh, you mentioned about those who have document uh, uh, that require for you to, to do the trading uh, or else you cannot do it. Uh, however, I would like to for you to to uh, uh, also consider uh, those who has not yet to ha have have this document, but uh, in your consideration that you you see the potential, you can you can see that they are not too small, but then however they are not big enough for 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 you to convince, but it's convince you that has potential. Uh, I'm, I'm not talking only from Malaysia or uh, from Thailand also. I think there are, f there are numbers of, of products that, that are, are having uh, good potential on that. I would like for you to consider those also. Uh, because if you only can focus on those have already have document, factory who has already have document, they, they are quite established already. And they might have, they, I think mostly they already have uh, the the what we call the 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 uh, the the outlet or the channel uh, the the people who buying already or they might have uh, not have enough uh, production uh, uh, up to their demand like Romley that you just said so I I feel like uh, you you at you are at the position that's very helpful to those. Uh, uh, production uh, line. That, I mean, the fact, factory that that bau nak bangun bau. It's promising. Both Malaysia and Thailand. I think you can find those people also. Uh, that's just my my idea that that uh, can do so much for them also for the, our economy. Uh, okay, that's that that's my idea, and uh, I like for you to consider those also. สวัสดีครับสวัสดีครับสวัสดีครับโอเค thank you for comment from Abemi Panumat basically for the products that uh, Mr Panumat mentions we actually put in our considerations but uh, there are a lot of problems that would happen by us carrying that products what I mean by problem is for us to push front products into the markets uh, we need to do marketing we need to spend on marketing budgets and we need to work hard on it and by working with uh, potentials but uh, unprepared documents or unready entrepreneurs uh, is not to say we can't we try but once their product is established they can't cope to the productions mm -hmm. when they can't cope to productions their QC fails and we are, when their QC fails their inventories fails um, we are the ones that have to face our customers. It happens to us with one of the products that we carry. The products that came um, kind of spoiled. And when we complain, what they say is, oh, you send it back to us, we'll change for you. Without that, we can't change. But come on, it's COVID. For us to bring it in is already a hassle. For us to send it back is another hassle. And they say, it's never mind. But your never mind is me having to face with my customer. So if the product is potential, uh, but SME level, what we require is at least get the documentation done so that at least for us to be able to help you, you actually proven yourself to an extent that 
hey, I did my parts and I would like to grow. Because many that can't even do their parts, um, I have a problem to have the trust because it happens personally to me a few times that when we push, before we take your products, before we start marketing your product, you promise us moon and sky saying that, wow, we're going to support you fully. We can produce this or that. But when the products goes well, you tell us, oh, we can't produce. My staff is sick. I don't have enough resources, this or that, which um, I have to face the consequences and the trust between me and my customers has been tarnished. So it's a big risk on our sides to actually, actually cater on that. Hopefully, um, I answered your question, Mr. Panmar. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what I mean is, is uh, uh, has uh, no document. Uh, I mean, I mean has has potential, but 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 uh, I I like to give example of the product from Thailand, uh, local in 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 Ratiwat is beef fish. Beef fish is doing well in 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 in, in Thailand. Uh, somehow in ASEAN has not yet uh, to explore uh, and. Uh, uh, the the product the, the factory itself in Naratiwat uh, and uh, the the document uh, has has I'm not sure they have all the documents that you require but but I think it's not that that uh, for you for you to to start from SME SME is very small amount but uh, the beef fish level is already uh, up to to the the the, the uh, to the level that I think you can easily uh, help him out uh, together with your with your uh, market. That's what I mean. Oh, and there are yeah. few more uh, that, but we yet to be found uh, in uh, three provinces that uh, just like beef fish. Uh, I just will give you for example. Uh, so that's that's the opportunity for beef fish also, and also the uh, the the opportunity for for you too. That's what I mean. Ah, thank you. Means, means I misunderstand the first measure is basically um, I'm actually like products like beef fish or nas nasrin from Patani mm -hmm. or Cape Thai from Tongkla. Yeah. I'm actually looking at those products, but at the moment, since I'm based here in Thailand, uh, I have to work on Malaysia products to Thailand first until maybe 2021 or 2022 when the borders is open, then we'll open an outlet of Wang Mat in Malaysia and we'll start exporting Thai products to Malaysia. And in terms of documentation part, uh, most of the times, Malaysian side is having the issue of documents for food and beverages because for them to produce F&B products in Malaysia, you, they only need the local KKM, Kementerian Kesihatan, which is Mesti Sijil. Mesti Sijil is recognized in Malaysia, Singapore, Brunei, and a few places, but not in Thailand. To register in KKM in Thailand, you need at least GMP or HACCP, which most of F&B manufacturer in Thailand already have GMP. So for F&B products in Thailand to export, I think they won't have much issue because for them to have a minimum requirement with GMP is there. So it's two different cases, Malaysia to Thailand and Thailand to Malaysia. Oh, okay, thank you. It's always the documentation problem. Yeah. But if I'm not mistaken, uh, every halal product from Malaysia already gone through that process, right? Most of the SMB in Malaysia only got Mesti. Oh, not meaning Mesti. with Mesti only they can get halal certification. Yes. We, uh, they, they have halal and mesti la most of the time. Mm. They have halal and mesti most of the time. I always, thought, I always thought uh, all product must go to the GMP and HACCP in order to get the halal, halal certification. No, no. Mesti, mesti is enough for Malaysia. Mm. That means that uh, it's not as strict as um, probably for the local product, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Great, great. Uh, I hope everyone is clear uh, what Wang Mat is actually doing because 
at first people thought that Walmart is just another mart altogether. But uh, after two day session that we managed to learn that Joey have a bigger vision on uh, bringing one mart to, I hope to the world. And is he's not only want to be a mart, he wants to be bigger than a mart. So, and it's an opportunity to all of us here that uh, especially entering Thailand market, that is the big, biggest uh, market share for the rest to enter. Because most people afraid to go to Thailand is because of one reason, is the language barrier. And uh, knowing the fact that you can speak five language is a lot easier for most Malaysian and probably Singaporean, probably Philippine, probably Indonesian to go through Wang Mat. So yes. I guess, I guess yeah. because of the name of the, the, the Wang Mat also, people, uh, pictures or visual, imagine that it's a retailing store. Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, I'm, I'm probably I'm not the only person that, that think that way. A lot of people think this is a, a retailing store. Uh, so, uh, I don't know you. You are more than more than retelling what, from what your vision, your, mm. your business plan. Uh, I'm not sure this one month will fit. <laughs> Maybe one month, uh, whatever it is, global, whatever it is. I think it's it's better way to put. The, well, the, looking at it, he's not on. He wish he vision the same uh, one month as a month, but eventually uh, when. Uh, it, time goes by, he said to he probably to her wife, uh, to his wife, said, why, why should we be just one month? We should be bigger than Tesco. So he's trying to be the Tesco here, another Tesco in uh, the world. So if you see Tes how big is Tesco, so he wants to be Tesco. So uh, <laughs> good that he actually start everything uh, with Malaysia, because he believed that uh, a lot of good product come from Malaysia and it's very good that um, uh, he brings uh, the, the, the next, the neighbor country to Thailand. So uh, I, I foresee Wang Mat going to be big in a few more years, knowing how Joey works. Uh, yeah, he said that he's already old, but the way he works is different from others. So, uh, uh, if you open your share, please let us know so we can buy. <laughs> <laughs> me too, me too. Yeah. Wait, let me explain about the name Wang Mat. It, it sounds quite funny, but why Wang Mat? Mm. Um, first, I'm new in this industry. Okay. Second, if I were to say I'm trading company, but trading company, you need experience and you need contact this or that and by bringing like underdog products, no name products, nobody would want to carry. But having a Wang Mat, at least I can have my own showrooms as Kedai Runcik Session. And it's so much easier for me to explain that, hi, I'm Joey from Wang Mat itself. Hi, I'm Joey, I'm doing tradings and this is etc. of my story. I, it will be too much of storytelling, but that but what I'm sharing today is about how my back end work, how I segmentize the business from retails, modern trades, online, and all that. Wang Mat's working way could be different from his name, but the name is actually to have a showroom showcase. Instead of me going to local store here and say, hey, carry my product, can or not, they say, I cannot sell. Uh, in the end, I have to give you back. So at least by having one showcase under the name Wang Mat, when the name is big, the next time I carry another product, they're like, wow, even Wang Mat selling it. Oh, they're selling well. This is the track record that we have. So it's much easier for me to push the idea of carrying our products with them. Because if Wang Mat is successful, they won't even know that I'm doing retails, wholesales, or modern trades. But they know, hey, this shop is big and, and, and he's doing well. He's been expanding to second branch, third branch, with office, this on that. And for me, I think that is the track records that the factory is asking about or my customer is asking about. How well could you do? If you want me to follow, if you want me to carry a product, lead an example. 
So I'm trying to work my way by leading an example and learning with the process. At least not me going in as a trader, say, hey, carry my products, but I don't know if it's selling well or not. That's why I came with the one mark concepts. Yeah. So how long will you take by conquering 77 province in Thailand? <laughs> Two to three years, maybe. Oh, that's good. That's good target. Two, because two to three years. You have seventy-seven. Right? Now you're already in South. Uh, I'm pretty sure Southern Thailand, sub sub soil lah. In one year, kau team already. The you, the the logistics and uh, yes, correct. And others you have to put in consideration for for us to supply whole Thailand. I think one year is enough. But mm. for us to supply good quality service of yeah. supplies, I think two to three years minimum. Wow. I was about to ask you what's your five years plan, but you already said two, three years. That's minimum. good. That's good. <laughs> minimum. Five years I, too long. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure you can do it, uh, Joey, because I, I tell the story. First, I met Joey. I didn't even know he's Malaysia, he's Chinese, or he's Thai because... I thought he was Thai because he, yeah, yeah, yes. spoke, he spoke Thai very fluently, very fluent. So I'm sure you, you can do it. Yes, yes. He can. Next, he can. next is to learn how to write and speak in Thai. <laughs> there was no problem. You can speak, you can communicate, you take all the new interns and do your preferably, no problem. <laughs> all right, any more questions? Yes, uh, we have someone who just came in. Uh, I think we have few Indonesian here. We have uh, Kevin from Jakarta. We have Fadil from Jakarta. Uh, we also have Malifa. Uh, maybe you guys have any question to ask? Just ask Joey. He's very, he's very nice person. He will answer your question, no problem. If if nobody have a question, then 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 I'll ask a question. <laughs> I guess I guess you have to ask a question now. <laughs> um, I think I've shared my part for today. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you very much, uh, Zaha from Tosh, for inviting everyone that actually came in to support today's Zoom sessions. And um, if let's say later you guys have any more questions, do feel free to message me uh, from Facebook or whatever. Uh, if you see a chance of further collaborations, um, anytime I'm available. Okay, we just have a question coming in from Mr. Kevin Sanjaya. Uh, what Wang Mat will do in the future? Um, Wang Mat's current goal that I set, my short term goal is to have at least one product in Thailand modern trades. One product that I import from Malaysia to be in Thailand modern trades before the border opens. My long-term goal for Wang Mart is to become the top, one of the top trading company of its kind between two countries, which is Thailand and Malaysia. Yeah? So hopefully I answer Mr. Kevin's question, yeah? Yeah, he just replied. Yeah, any more question? Any more question? If no question, what I will ask is, uh, since everyone spends uh, a little bit of their time today with today's Zoom sessions, um, I would like to get to know each of you much better. So if it's possible, maybe we could take turns to introduce yourself for maybe 15 to 30 seconds uh, on your video cameras um, what you need to mention is uh, name, uh, your company names, the products or what you do, and what you expect that we could actually work on, or maybe I can help you on the part since I'm now in Thailand. Yeah. So maybe we start with the host itself, uh, Mr. Zaha first. <laughs> Thank you, Joey. All right, uh, I am Zaha. Uh, I'm actually part of Tosh Group. Tosh Group is actually a consulting company. 
we consult our client in Singapore to expand the business throughout uh, Southeast Asia up to Middle East and also another part of uh, Asia. Uh, a part of that, uh, we also bring businesses from these five countries, which is Philippines, Indonesia, Thailand, Malaysia, to Singapore, who plan to expand their business there as well. So yes, uh, uh, we 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 created this uh, Zoom networking session platform in order for us to stay connected to our uh, friends, our clients uh, in the region, so that uh, we 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 not going to get uh, disconnect. So true enough, by having this platform, we managed to get to know the people that we do not manage to get to know uh, throughout the region. And it's also a part of like uh, introducing people and get them to know each other well. Uh, yes, um, this is pretty much what we do. And we hope that we can get in touch with all of you here and uh, get connected. So yes, that's what Tosh Group all about. Uh, yes, I am basically based in Indonesia uh, because we have quite a huge numbers of uh, clients that actually expand to Indonesia. So I'm actually managing the Indonesian office well, our base is actually in uh, Singapore. Thank you. All right. So the next person will be our Mr. Panumat. Abemi. <laughs> Name, company, and what do you do? No sound. You off your your mic. Okay, my name is Panamat uh, Chanakan, or you can call me Sohaimi. Uh, my personal uh, business is Garmin, uh, where we uh, factory in, uh, in Bangkok. Uh, and uh, we have uh, a full outlet and in Yala, Naratiwat, Patani, and in Hat Yai, uh, Central Festival at Shopping Mall. And we're going to have another outlet in Bangkok, the mall Bangkapi. Uh, we, we're going to open up this uh, next month. Uh, so uh, mainly we're doing offline, uh, having the display in, at the outlet. Uh, however, we do also have uh, online uh, through Lazada to Shopee, Shopee and also through um, uh, wholesaling also. We, we send to uh, to China uh, and some uh, to Malaysia also uh, but uh, however our product is, is very limited uh, due to our product is, is uh, mostly handcraft uh, so that is my personal business and also I'm also in social enterprise uh, uh, as a Naratiwat social enterprise and uh, I mainly also helping the SME in, in Naratiwat. So just about mainly what I'm doing. Uh, what we are worrying right now, as uh, Joe mentioned, second wave of COVID. Uh, a couple of days ago, we have uh, the numbers uh, going up in Chiang Mai mm -hmm. and Chiang Rai. And some even in Yala, one person in Yala show up uh, as uh, new cases. So hopefully that that's not going to be a very severe uh, second wave. It's going to affect us very, uh, very, very, very big effect uh, because uh, we'll be locked down. Hopefully it's not the case. Thank you, Joe. Yeah, the third one should be Kai. Is Kai with us? Because Kai is from Post Group Singapore, right? Zaha, is Kai in? He was, he was, he was. He probably is with something else. 
or whoever that wish to introduce themselves can 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 there you yes. go okay all right um kai introduce yourself <laughs> No sound. Hello. Hello. Hi, hi, hi. Hi. Uh, you know, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you now. Hello, hello. Line yeah, seems to be back. So, uh, yeah, I'm with Zaha together. So basically, we are doing the same thing, uh, bringing businesses to overseas and uh, assisting businesses to open up in other countries. Lah. So, yeah. Chuan, <laughs> can you uh, stop or are you driving? No, I stopped my car. Okay, okay, okay. I stopped my car the first side, yeah. Should be yeah. alright. <laughs> I am Chuan. So I am uh, Joey's friend so who invited me here. Uh, I stay in Malaysia, uh, currently in Johor Bahru, which uh, I am a dying tourist industry people. So um, I, 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 my business stopped for like you know, uh, 10 months since uh, the pandemic, but then uh, yeah, I'm still in the uh, travel industry, so I do work in pretty much a niche market about travel, like you know, about purchase of hotels, uh, trip planning, uh, even like training kind of uh, travel. Yeah, my MICE. So this is all about me. All right. Um, is Sarah still in? Or anyone that wish is anyone that is still with us listening to this Zoom session? Um, hope you guys could spend some time to introduce yourself and your business by turning on your video camera. Hey, morning, Joey. Morning, Sanan. Hey, thanks for the sharing. I'm not from retail. Uh, I'm doing what Zaha and Kai and, and uh, Siraj is doing, but focusing on tourism uh, in Indonesia. So, um, other than that, I'm running my IT company. So, so quite far away, but uh, from retail. But very interesting uh, facts that, that you you share with us. Very grateful to learn quite a fair bit of things on, on how you you run your your business. Um, so, so for myself, yeah, I'm, I'm running an IT company in Singapore. Uh, hopefully, uh, in Indonesia soon. I'm already supporting clients uh, overseas, although no branches in any other country yet. Uh, only in Indonesia. Um, other than that, yeah, I'm, I'm doing uh, tourism, tourism industry promotion for Belitung. That is my focus in Indonesia. I see. So Shannon could link up with uh, Chuan, right? Since both of you is in tourism, maybe yeah. when the country opens, then you could work something out. Yeah. So yeah, I'm stuck in Singapore now. <laughs> <laughs> He's stuck in Johor. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> no, All right. It's okay. Uh, I still travel around. Uh, I used to go. Uh, I I have a uh, partner. Some partners in uh, Lombok. I I I work very close in Lombok and Bali. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. I, I know there's a secret tunnel from Johor to Singapore. If you guys want to use, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we are uh, a secret tunnel now in June. Oh, I teleport there. <laughs> yeah. All right. Next, next person, Azuni. Let the ladies first, and then Randy. Hello, uh, Helen. Good morning. Morning, Azuni. Hello, Sejahtera. Salam sejahtera. Puas lama tak dengar. Uh, saya hanya biasa-biasa, just a graphic designer. But uh, I don't know how to introduce myself because um, I'm not doing any retail. But I'm interested. Okay, uh, I think if you can sell Malaysia product uh, in Thailand, so why not I sell Thailand product in Malaysia? Sounds good. Right, sebab dekat um, in Kelantan, 
there's a lot of demands um thailand products like uh sausage oh i don't know tapi dia punya demand Nama. I, I I have a list we can talk later. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure to contact me. Yeah. And uh, I don't mind if you want to to open a uh, one mark here. Uh, is there any vacancy as a storekeeper here? <laughs> sure, sure. In the future. <laughs> yeah, contact right. me, right? Yeah, I contact you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Randy, Randy on webcam just now. We still have Randy, Farah. Randy, Pak Randy masih di sana. Rita, yeah. Melifa, Kevin, Kevin, Kevin can on the webcam or voice, I think. Yeah, hi Kevin. Wow. You you have one on your mic? Yes. Hello. Surprising. Uh, hi everyone. Hello Kevin. Hello, I'm Kevin Sanjaya. I'm uh financial planner from Alliance Life Insurance Indonesia. Uh, what do you do? I'm today today join this webinar for connection or updating for your insight about how to survive in business. And what what what? Kevin Kevin is a insurance agent in Jakarta for oh, like for Alliance, right? Kevin, Alliance Life yep. Insurance, yes. Alliance. Hmm. Fantastic. So, uh, a member from Jakarta, Rita. Yep, Jakarta. And and Hello, Rita. I, I, uh, Hi. Else? Yeah, Kevin. Anything else? Uh, I'm also have uh, eh, sorry. I'm also have a startup about customized t-shirt with my friend. But during this pandemic, my startup was closed. <laughs> okay. oh. I'm so hard to connect it with another friend. Eh, with my friend. Yeah, that's it. All right, Rita. Thank you came in. Thank you, Kevin. Lita, your turn. Yeah, I'm from Indonesia. Many friends from Indonesia. Jakarta. Today. Yeah, Jakarta. So, what do you do, yeah? I'm uh, now uh, for a beautician. Beautician says in cut hair, cosmetics. Uh, about the skin. Makeup. Uh, art skin, skin for skin. the treatment. Yeah. Oh, skin treatments. I see. All right. Thailand has got a lot of uh, herbals, cosmetic product. If you are interested. Yeah. Mm, now for the pandemic, how can we increase for the business? Okay, for beauticians. I think it's the same category as uh, hair salons and all that, that you need to meet people. And this is the first front line that get affected by COVID pandemic, if let's say, especially there's a lockdown. So what I could say is change your mindset, use your portfolio, use your customer base as a beautician and change from doing uh, skin treatments to selling maybe skin products. That's why I asked you if you are interested in uh, Thai cosmetic products. Because with that, you don't need to meet people, you don't need to touch for yourself, safety. And even you stay at home, you can look pretty. People, you know, spend time, stay at home, use, take care of your own skins by having good products. I think you should change from service to product for a while. Okay. And uh, for the Wang Mart, it's uh, talk about uh, product. Yeah, for products. Kids. Pardon? For market product like uh, Indomaret? Uh, yeah, similar. Oh. Similar to Indomaret. So what's the business of the one part for the, for the uh, business partner or something? I, I don't understand the question. Uh, 
bisa <laughs> kalau bisa ngomong dalam bahasa Indonesia bisa aja kita oh nanti. ini bisa bahasa Indonesia <laughs> bisa kita bisa translate nah, itu itu wamat itu lebih ke uh, sistemnya itu ke apa ya gitu oh Wang sistemnya Mat. Wang Ma details, I think I think Zaha can explain on my side now though. Yeah, Wang Ma itu kayak uh, aslinya mau ke, bikin kayak apa Alfamart Indomaret, tapi visi yang lebih gede buat Wang Ma itu bukan cuma jadi uh, retail doang, tapi be, mereka bikin kayak uh, perusahaan yang lebih gede untuk buat trading. Oh. Ya, misalnya contoh, nah, ke contoh Indomie, Indomie itu dari Indonesia kan? Iya. Yeah. Wamat itu bukan cuma beli satu kontainer atau dua kontainer. Wamat itu tuju, uh, mau bi, mau jual Indomie itu di seluruh Thailand. Jadi oh, itu dari Thailand ya? Ya Thailand di Thailand. Jadi Wamat itu uh, kayak trader gitu. Tapi hmm. mereka punya uh, ruko mereka sendiri di Thailand. Oh. Ya, contoh kalau ada pembeli-pembeli yang mau beli Indomie di nah. di Thailand, mau uh-huh. order yang banyak, jadi mereka ketemu sama Joey di Wang Mat. Jadi ketemu sama Joey, mereka mau uh, uh, saya mau beli satu kontena, contoh. Nah, satu kontena itu di order lewat Wang Mat. Itu sistemnya. Oh, bisa lihat di mana ya? Di website ya kali uh, Belum. Kayaknya belum punya website ya. Do you have website, Joey? Not, not active. Not yeah. active. We have website, but we are, we are not focusing on that. Ya. Yeah. Oh, Terus portfolio-nya gimana lihatnya? Ada portfolio-nya. Uh, portfolio Wang Mat gitu? Iya. Uh-uh. Hmm. Uh, she is asking for your portfolio. And we can work on that. Yes. Nanti dikasih sama Joey ya ke ke Rita. Oh, berarti ini lebih ke uh, bisnisnya Wamak gitu ya? Iya, yeah, bisnisnya Wamak. Oke, oh, oke. Okay, okay. Soalnya belum connect. <laughs> oh oh ya, yeah, belum connect. <laughs> ya, yeah, gak apa-apa. Nanti kita connectkan lagi. Yeah. Terima kasih ya, Rita. Thank you. Thank you, Joey. Thank you. Oke, okay, Randy. Randy dari tadi. Oke, okay, hi. Halo, Randy. Oke, okay, hi, Joy. And Mr. Saha. Yes. <laughs> Oke. Okay. Um, my name is Randy. I work at local bank in North Sulawesi, Indonesia. No, 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 no. Uh, and I'm a civil contractor too. Hmm. And now I'm start a build a startup uh, about a marketplace too. But and but now it's pandemic, so um, I have difficult time for build the startup. And I'm still looking for the best business in pandemic. So uh, I'm uh, in this webinar. I hope uh, Mr. Joey and Joey, I can learn about your your business about Walmart. Yes. All right. Hopefully, hopefully my sharing helped you a little today. Excuse me. Yes. Um. I think you uh, Wang Mart like a um a startup or hilang <laughs> hilang Okay. <laughs> okay, enggak apa. It's okay. I think he was he was about to ask uh whether Wang Mart is a startup still. Or already established uh, company. I think that is where he's going actually. All right, never mind. All right, uh, Farah, right? Hello, Farah. 
Hello, Joey. Uh, thank you for your inspiring presentation today. So actually, I'm with Torch Group and I handle the digital marketing side, such as website and the social media. And I'm uh, actually currently doing my postgraduate studies in uh, Jakarta. I live in Jakarta and I'm really... Uh, and inspired by your presentation today, and I would like to learn more about business, especially international business. So thank you very much, Joey, for your uh, wonderful presentation uh, today. Thank you too. So who else that we have here? <laughs> who else that you, have, you haven't I seen? I think Sarah. Ria and um, father already said he's at work. So Miss Nur Nurfahana, right? Yeah. I think we have about three participants that have not uh, introduced themselves. Farhana. Yeah. But I'm not sure if they are around though. If not, then I think maybe the host can uh, wrap up today's session. And thank you very much for the invitation. Hopefully, my sharing today is uh, beneficial to many of you. And thank you for attending. Thank you, Joey. Thank you for, for, for your interesting presentation about Wang Mat. Uh, good that we all here managed to understand what exactly Wang Mat is all about. Uh, I feel that uh, I, I hope the rest of us feel the same. Uh, the rest of us here, hopefully you all learn from Joey. If anything we need from Joey, please do not hesitate to let me know so I can contact Joey or you guys can uh, get Joey's number in the group chat. So yes. Oh, group photo. Yes, please, please. We should get a group photo. Yeah, uh, I want to get ready. <coughs> Who is gonna snap the photo? Actually, <laughs> I I yeah. can snap actually. All right, all right. Okay, one. Okay, all right. Ria, Ria, where are you? Okay, Sarah. Okay, probably they at work. Never mind. Okay, one, two, three. Smile. One, okay, another one. One, two, three, smile. All right. So later, Zaha, we invite all of them to our WhatsApp group, right? Yes, we'll just meet them in WhatsApp group. So I'll think continue there. Thank you very much for Thank you very much yeah. for, for joining. joining I'm yeah? in Yala now. Oh, okay. <laughs> I never know where you are because you've been around Bangkok, Hanyai, everywhere. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll see you coffee. I'll see you for a coffee when, when yeah, I'm please, more ready. Please do. Uh, please do. Thank you. Right. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Bye-bye. Very busy guy. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Okay. Bye. Zara, then off Facebook first. Hmm? Facebook, Facebook. Okay, wait. I think.